We're less than a week away from the national championship game being played. Can you think of a situation where there's a program that has a play caller in the national championship game that wasn't even with the program to begin the season? Yes, Doug, not very often. You, you Normally people stay. But I had Brian Harson, who left us to go to Arkansas State, and I had Gene Chizik, who left us to go to Iowa State. And I always felt like, Doug, that you couldn't have two bosses. And jobs are really, really hard. Head coaching jobs are hard. Calling plays are really, really hard. And if you try to to, to the of them at once, it gets very, very difficult. So it's unusual, especially now with a playoff that Nick would let Lane Kiffin called the first week and not the second, but it's it's not unusual for someone to change. I, I think the 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 real all star here is Bill Battle, the athletic director at Alabama, because he's allowed Nick to bring in guys that are ready to take over when somebody leaves. So how many people can hire a, an ex head coach to be uh, play caller in waiting? So you have the luxury of doing this. It just doesn't happen very often. How do you think it affects the game? I think it could affect the game because obviously Lane's been there three years. He's got a relationship with Jalen Hurt and the offense, the offensive staff. Steve Sarkeesian is a tremendous football coach. He's been away from it for a while. He's, he's had some issues he's been dealing with. I like Steve a lot, but he hasn't called plays in a long time. And uh, the other thing that might make this work is that he and Lane were kind of raised together with Pete Carroll and have run the same offense, at, uh, but he's also coaching against a very talented defense and Brent Venables, who is a, a master at uh, multiple defenses and bringing blitzes. So he's going to have to keep the game plan simple for a freshman quarterback anyway, but there's no question that Steve will be a better play caller next fall than he will next week. With that in mind, Mac Brown, our guest on CBS Sports Radio, I think we've heard enough uh, football minds say there's kind of rhythm to play calling, right? Um, and even if our kind of fallback as non-football guys like you are would say, well, Nick Saban is so much in control. Uh, this is about Sark and his quarterback, the rhythm that has to be established. How do you do that in such short order? But, Doug, we always said that the play caller has to be in the quarterback's mind. And unless you know what he likes and trust what he likes, then you can't be aggressive with your calls because they have a great defense. They, they, their kicking game has, has been unbelievable. In fact, the kicking game was the defense in the national or, or the uh, difference in the national championship game last year. So I think if, if I know Steve Sarkeesian well enough, he's going to sit down with Jalen Hurt now and say, what do you like? What do you want me to call? Give me your best five runs. What do you need? And and that's what he'll do to try to get on the same page in a very short period of time. Mac Brown, our guest on CBS Sports Radio. Doug Gottlieb Show, CBS Sports Radio, CBS Sports Network. Uh, you can, if one of your friends misses this interview, download the daily podcast. We cut up interviews. We cut up uh, the best of and um, also hourly and entire shows as well. That's Doug Gottlieb Show whether it's Facebook, iTunes, Play.it. Mac Brown continues to be our guest. Let's let's go to the other side, Deshaun Watson and that offense. Um, Mac, in many ways, this reminds me of Jameis Winston the year after they won the national title. They got back to the playoffs and then got blown out by, by Oregon. Uh, he hasn't had as good a running game, but he obviously has a ton of talent. Mike Williams can, can beat you deep down the field. Give me your sense... Clemson's going against what some people consider to be the best college defense they've seen in a couple decades. Give me your sense of how Clemson's talented offense can attack this defense. Well, I'd say, Doug, a lot like he did last year. He and Ole Miss were the only – Deshaun Watson, Clemson, and Ole Miss were about the only two people that really ran the ball up and down the field last year against Alabama, which had Kelly. So you've got to have a talented quarterback that can run and throw, and Deshaun can do that as well as anybody in the country. I, I coached a team after losing a national championship. It's not easy to do. It's hard to get their focus back. We see Florida State a couple of years ago with their issues after winning it. Um, winning it is tough, but losing it's just as tough. And um, Dabo's had an offense that's not quite as good in the offensive line as you'd like playing against this Alabama defensive front. But they've got skill at wide receiver. 
Williams can get deep. But those guys can fly. You've got Gallman who can run the ball. They're very balanced. But I think the difference in this ball game, if Clemson wins, is that they take care of the ball and Deshaun does what he did last year with his arm and his feet. He makes plays. Mac Brown continues to be our guest, getting you ready for Monday's national championship game over on ESPN. He, of course, an ESPN college football analyst. This is Doug Gottlieb Show, CBS Sports Radio. There's a perception out there that um, when a coach leaves to get a new job and uh, he doesn't have to sit out, right? Like, he's not sitting. He's leaving his old job and going to a new job. And some people make a correlation between, hey, players are sitting out bowl games only because it's fair. Coaches miss bowl games. They pretend like it doesn't matter. For somebody who's lived this life, not just, you know, going offense coordinator, offense coordinator, but like you left Tulane to North Carolina, North Carolina to Texas. How all-encompassing is taking on a new job? Because people make the comparison that player and coach are the same. Hey, if coach can leave, a player can leave. What is it actually like for a coach to leave? Doug, it's, uh, it's, it's multitasking at its best. It's it's really unbelievable that uh, the the sad thing about the the coaches leaving is if they don't leave at some point they'll probably get fired where they are, and and you have to continue to take the best job and move forward. And now we're allowing kids who graduate to do the same thing. The the graduate transfer rule lets a kid make choices when he's got options. Um, and and now for the first time we're seeing some kids sit out bowl games, which. Um, is a, a whole nother story and a whole nother ball of wax. And whether that continues or not, somebody asked me the other day, will we see high school players that have scholarships start sitting out of high school championship games? So they'll be safe for their scholarship. Uh, so it's a, it's a totally different time. And I, I think what we're doing is we're seeing college football with more of a, an NFL tint to it because it's, there's a lot of money involved. There's winning is involved at a very high level and you better win quick and you've got probably three years now to make it where when the Frank Beamers of the world and I started um, if we'd had three years we'd have both been fired at North Carolina Virginia Tech because you you had longer then Uh, but I I do think that uh, social media recruiting year-round recruiting freshmen uh, on up through seniors uh, the number of things you have to deal with with high school coaches with your faculty with your staff, with your administration, um, with the grassroots fans, with your billionaire boosters. I mean, it's a, it's a handful, and there is absolutely no time off. You just have no life outside of football. And, and that's what makes it tough for Elaine Kiffin, even at the level of a FAU, which people wouldn't think would be a difficult job. Uh, it is difficult, and he's got to hire staff. And Lane's had some tough times with being a head coach, and this is really important to him. And uh, unless you're fully committed, I, I think that's why Nick had to make the decision or Lane had to make the decision. Whoever decided that it wasn't working and it didn't look good at, at the Washington game, it was time to move on. When you're the head coach, that is what you do. Mac Brown, our guest on CBS Sports Radio. When you walked away from Texas, uh, I thought privately, and I said so on the show, that um, when you get away from it and you're at studio up at ESPN, you're kind of disconnected a little bit from the sport. But when you go to the games... I thought that would connect you back to the sport and it would, if you're 65, you can still go back. If you wanted to, you could still go back and do it. I thought being at the games, I know you called the Alamo Bowl, for example, it'd make you want to get back into it. Um, Has that happened, that being on the sidelines for practice, that being in the booth for a game has drawn you to want to get back in as a coach? Doug, you know what? Um opposite of that i really missed being on the sideline when i was in the studio only the first year when i've gone back to the campuses and gone back to the games and and when i'm involved with the coaches and the players it's really brought me back closer to football now it makes me miss it some but it also uh, gives me a, a, a reason to say that i'm still connected to it and and that i'm i'm in the game and and um, they didn't hire me, Doug, for my looks, my age, or my voice. They hired me to tell them what's going on behind the scenes during the ball games, and I catch myself doing that. I'm trying to tell the fans what's actually happening in the coach's mind on the sideline, and, and that's been very healthy for me the last two years. Mac Brown's our guest on CBS Sports Radio. You're part of the new American Coaches Award Show, one that will be shown here on CBS Sports Network. 
Uh, the USA Today Sports Coaches Play Call Play Caller of the Year is now open for fan voting. You can go to usatoday.com to find out more details. Um, how do you compare what they've done at Western Michigan, what they've done at Nav- at Navy, to what they've done at Alabama? Like, how do you make that as a coach's coach? What you did at Tulane was as good or better than what you did at Texas and Carolina the same. Like, people don't understand the different challenges. As somebody who's been in this business and been in that situation, how do you determine who's more deserving of a Coach of the Year award? Well, the, the, the National Football Coach of the Year finalist or Kenny Niamatolota at Navy, Nick Saban at Alabama, P.J. Fleck at Western Michigan, Dan Holgerson at, at West Virginia, and Mike McIntyre at Colorado, and, that award is usually gone to the guy who surprised everybody and took something that wasn't good and turned it into something that's really good. And that's why Nick's not a guy who usually wins those awards because everybody expects Alabama to win. But the the jobs that uh, P.J. Flake did at Western Michigan, that, that job over the last three years, four years, has been unbelievable. And Mike McIntyre was a guy everybody thought was fired. I mean, he was gone. And here he is uh, winning his division in the um, – in, in, Colorado in the Pac-12. So uh, those guys uh, have all done a tremendous job. Kenny does a great job at Navy every year, and obviously Nick's got something going that's happened very seldom in, in college football. But normally an award like that would go to a guy like Mike McIntyre who totally turned the Colorado program around this year and won 10 games. Uh, perfect point of that, uh, Mac, is you call that Valero Automobile, and I watched the game, and I don't know how Colorado won 10 games. Their personnel appeared to be inferior in so many ways to Oklahoma State. And Oklahoma State was the second best team in the Big 12 at best. And, um, uh, okay, so let me just ask you this. Um, national championship game. You have a pick? You know, Doug, I'm, I'm going to wait and see. I, I, I think it's going to be really, really close. I, I, I don't think it's going to be like, some we saw last weekend. I think this game will be like last year's game. If you go back and really study last year's game, the difference was kicking game. The onside kick, the kickoff return. Everything else was good, and everybody's talking about this year's Alabama defense. Last year's Alabama defense was great as well. So uh, I I can't wait to see it, but I'm going to wait. Last year I picked uh, Clemson. And then uh, on game day they came in and told me the starting defensive end might not play and the starting corner might not play. And I said, ooh. Well, that's not as good. So can can I change? And my my boss he said, nope, you can't. So you got to stay with what you got. So I'm all, I'm gonna try to hold it as long as I can this week. But I think we're gonna have a we're gonna have a great game. 